Welcome to another edition of Legends. I'm Chris Katulak. Today we're paying a visit to Romo Land, north of Temecula, California. No, this place has nothing to do with the Dallas Cowboys. Romo Land, that's the name of the town, is the focal point of the Blaine Schwanevelt quarter horse operation. It's here where the 12-time champion trainer breeds, boards, breaks, and trains his runners. Now, in essence, Blaine is actually a 20-time champion trainer as he led the nation in wins eight consecutive years before the AQHA even established the Champion Trainer Award. Much of Blaine's success can be attributed to his family roots in Idaho. Yes, on the potato farm and with their cattle, but most importantly from the lessons he learned from his father, Lee Schwanevelt. He was a really good horseman. Boy, if he rode a horse, it was a good horse. And he, he, and he drove a team, he could drive a team anywhere. I mean, he had a lot of good horses. But he was a, he was a dairyman and he, and he dealt in dairy cattle all his life. And, and I, when I got old enough, I was his partner in dairy cattle. And he'd send me out to the auctions and every week I'd go to the auctions. Every day I'd go to an auction and buy the cattle and bring them back and he'd sell them at home there. All right, Blaine, what about the introduction to horses then? Uh, how did that hook get set in you? My brothers and I, we ran chariot races. We'd run our ponies and stuff. And then later we got some decent horses and ran on the chariot. But, but that's kind of what started us into the horse racing. But when I was little, when I was young, I was little and I rode match races around there for my neighbors and my uncle. They'd match races around there and I'd ride them horses for them because I was real small when I was little. I never got big till I was about 16, 17 years old, I never started growing. You know, when I went to high school as a freshman, I weighed 110 pounds. Blaine, as we've discussed, your father Lee was so important in your upbringing along with your siblings. But of course, your wife Shirley, she had a lot to do with your success as well. She's a big part of my deal. You know, she's always been a big part of my deal. She's worked at the barn. She can go out there right now. In fact, when I was sick this winter, I wasn't entering no horses. And she went out there and started entering the horses. And she made me get over my sickness pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's always been a part of my business, and, and uh, she can do it all. Blaine, talking about the early days and getting things started, there's a man that really helped get things started for you, and that's Ivan Ashman. Yeah, he, I met Ivan through, I, I, he run chariots and stuff, and, and I met him through trying to sell horses, you know, I was dealing in horses a lot, and, and uh, I sold, I, I, I tried to sell him some good horses, and he was buying horses a lot at that time, and then I finally met him and, and sold him some horses, and after I sold him some horses, then, we became really good friends, and and he he told me when we we'd been running up there in Idaho for seven or eight years, you know, and we'd win a lot of races, we wouldn't win any money. And I could give uh, five thousand dollars for a filly, and we took her to to uh, Glen's Ferry in Idaho there and run her in a race, and he got ten dollars for the win, <laughs> five thousand for. Her. He said he said we need to go somewhere where there's some money. He said I say we go to California. So that fall I I said well we'll group a bunch of these up and go to California. So when I came to California, I put in for twenty stalls and Curly gave me eleven stalls and they were all Ivan's horses. Blaine, why don't you tell me about your first world champion in Band of Angels? We bought her here at the sale at Los Alamitos for $8,000, and she was by Sugar Bars. And, uh, oh no, but excuse me, she was by, uh, she was by uh, Alamitos Bar and out of a Sugar Bars merit, excuse me. But she was really a runner. She was really a good looking filly and, and ended up being a great one, and that was the first. Then I, when I bought her for $8,000, Ivan also gave me half of her. And, you know, we worked that way for the first eight or ten years I was down here. Very good partnership. Band of Angels would be your first world champion, but then your first champion of champions would also be a female. Yeah. Miss Thermalark was the first champion of champions we won with, and, and she, she came to me. She, she didn't run good in the derby at Riodosa. She something I don't remember where she did run, but she ran second or something, or third in the, in the Rio Dosa Derby, and then she came out here and we won the Champion of Champions with her. At that time, you could start them fillies and them horses from down in Rio Dosa. You know, they didn't win anything, and they, they used to have races, non-winners of 19 and a quarter twice, you know. So I get her out here and I stick her in one of those races, non-winners of 19 and a quarter <laughs> twice, and she'd made about 300,000 or something, because she'd ran second in the All-American as a two-year-old. And, and oh, they screamed and hollered. Well, then she came back and won the 
the uh, champion of champions. Let's talk now, Blaine, about a horse that you did have in your care early on, and he was an Ivan Ashman horse, and he was really part of an odyssey for you, and that being town policy. Explain that story. He, he ran second in the All-American, and uh, I think he was only beat twice his two-year-old year. He won all the fraternities. He won the kindergarten and uh, the Governor's Cup and the Ed Burke. He won all them fraternities. And then uh, as a two-year-old, and then I brought him back from Fresno after we'd run in the Governor's Cup fraternity, and I took him to my barn over here on Western Avenue and was just going to lay him down for a little while, you know, and, and get him ready to go back, and, and they stole him. Uh, explain that. You showed up in the morning one time, or what? How was well, that? Well, I was going to Oklahoma to the sale, and Mike Chambers was working for me, and and I had a little place there, and we had a lock on the gate and everything, but they just lifted the gate up off the hinges, and stole that horse. And I was at the airport, and and Mike called Shirley and told her that the horse was gone, and so she called me at the airport, and then she came and got me, and I came back, and of course we never found him, but we found where they'd walked him out of the barn area and loaded him in a little something and tracks you know and so he was gone about six months all right now explain what happened in the time from when you discovered he was gone until you kind of picked up on the trail there were a lot of leads i understand yeah we had uh, every day we'd get a phone call they'd, they'd say they seen town policy in a trailer going down the road or he was at fresno in a crowd or uh, we we get a, a crank call about him uh, two or three times a week, you know, the people had seen him and knew where he was and everything. But the the last phone call I got, I, I got a call from a guy at Presidio, Texas, where they cross cattle, and he was a, worked for the United States because he worked cross cattle there, and he said that we had a, a a deal in the magazine where it said there was a twenty thousand dollar reward and he'd read the magazine so he knew that they had a twenty thousand reward for this horse well this mexican came in there and told him he knew he's looking at the magazine there and he says i know that cavallo the cavallo is here you know and uh, he said he called me and he said well this guy he said we might have your horse he said the top guy's name was tom mccall he said we might have your horse he said this mexican says he's here so as he told us where to come. Me and Ivan went to Chihuahua, which we didn't find him at Chihuahua, and we we uh, got there, and they told us we needed these papers to to prove that we owned him, you know. So we got the papers flown down there and got all that stuff. And then we flew from there to Durango and looked at all them little old fields, and there's a lot of barns and stuff out through there and places to train horses, and we stopped at all of them and looked for him. We never found him, and we went to Durango. And the second day, when we was at Drangle, we, we found where he'd been. So we left and came home, because I had the horses in at Bay Meadows, and so I came home, and we, we got home, and that next night, Sunday night, the state policeman called me, and he said, we got your horse. And he told me they had him already at home, and they, we, so we went back down, and, and Ivan, he, he got that rambunctious, and we was paying a $20,000 reward, and he ended up giving the cops a $25,000 reward. Dead. So we ended up giving 40000 to get him back. But <laughs> and he wasn't looking too good, huh? No, he was looking awful poor, boy. But he, we walked in that crowd, he come right up to us, boy. He was wanting, he was wanting to see some, something. That had to give you a terrific feeling oh, when that boy. happened, Blaine. Yeah. It, just about make you cry when he come walking up to you, you know, and lay his head on your shoulder wanting to get out of there. And what about town policy on the racetrack? Less than three months, he, he set a track record at Los Alamitos in the trials of the Derby, and then he won the Derby and set a new track record. He liked being home, didn't he? Oh, gosh, he did good when he came home. He was poor, but gosh, he got to feeling so good and doing so good, you couldn't believe what he did. And that all in his three-year-old year, and then Blaine, he would come back and win the Los Alamitos Winter Championship also. Yeah. And then his four-year-old year, he's the only horse to win the kindergarten, the Los Alamitos Derby, and the, and the Vessels Maturity. He won the, all three of them. He, when he was a four-year-old, he won the maturity. And he is uh, somewhere near to everybody when they go to Los Alamitos and that he is buried in the infield. Explain yeah. that. 
Yeah, Mrs. Bessel, let us bury him in the infield in, uh, at Los Alamitas. He's on the back side back there by one of those ponds, and, and she let us bury him there, and it was very privileged to do it, you know. But every time I go to the races, yeah, the kids will ask me about town policy. And some of them older people, you know, they'll say, where's town policy, you know, and <laughs> they'll ask me about him. We've told you about a few of Blaine's star runners, but there is one former star that shines bright above the rest. We'll tell you about The Fridge when Legends continues. All right, Blaine, one horse that we must speak of, and that is the current record holder as far as earnings go in quarter horse racing, Refrigerator. Tell me about The Fridge. Well, The Fridge is an unreal horse. He was, he was great big and, uh, and so kind and everything around the barn and everywhere. But boy, when he hit that racetrack, his veins were just come out of him boy and when he ran he ran with everything he had we if you breezed him he breezed with everything he had or he run with everything he had he that was his nature he just he ran hard and uh, I think he's probably one of the toughest horses that we ever had to gallop you know and, and uh, Kip would gallop him and Ramon would gallop him and they'd come back in their veins and they'd be sweating. I mean, he'd just kick and play and he was a tough son of a gun. You know, I don't ever know of him to be sick. He never was sick, that horse. He never was. He always was a bundle of joy to be around and train and stuff. How do you feel when other horses get close to breaking his records, Mark? Well, it's been worrying me, but you know, they got a long ways to go and they're running at about three times the money he ran for. They're running for ten times the money he's running for, but so it'll be broken. Tell me about First Down Dash. First Down Dash was a great horse. I, I got him as a three-year-old. Uh, I did. Mike Robbins had him as a two-year-old, and I got him as a three-year-old. And uh, I, I think he only got beaten one time as a three-year-old. He, he won the championship, and he won the champion of champions. And, he was a very, very, very good horse. He was really a runner. Did he have any particular characteristic or quality about him? No, he, he always did get in the gate and he'd lift a little bit, lift a little bit. He never flipped in his life, but he'd lift. He'd lift all the time when he went in the gate. I stood him millions of times. I'd put a chain on him and I'd back him out and bring him in and do everything we did with horses, but he'd always lift. The son of God would always lift. I run him one night here and Earl Holmes was standing by me and he he did the little lift and got left and he hit me in the stomach and he said, oh, he got left, he's gone, he ain't, and then pretty quick they said, and here comes first down dash. He beat him easy. He, he, he was the damnedest horse to do that. He just, he just get in there and he'd lift, he'd just lift in the gate. Okay, so we've spoken of the terrific horses, but what about the terrific accomplishment, Blaine? Fifty million dollars in earnings, over five thousand winners, twelve consecutive titles as the AQHA champion trainer, and nine champion of champions. Which is most important? Oh, all of it. I don't uh, value one of them any more than the other. You know, I've I've had a lot of good people to train for, and lots of good horses. I appreciate it all, and I've uh, you know, and the, gosh, it's all important to me. You know, it's very important to me. The the to be the champion trainer of the AQHA for 12 straight years is pretty tough to do. I've talked to a lot of people and it seems like the common denominator that they have to say when they get a question about Blaine is one, hell of a horseman and two, he treated everybody fairly. Well, I've tried to all my life. My dad taught me that and I've tried to all my life. I think that's that's uh, what I was brought up to. I got people that's worked for me 40 years, you know. What about some of those people? Um, name some of those names. Well, my nephew, Monty, he runs the ranch out there and uh, does a heck of a job. He's been there, he's been with me nearly 40 years and, and he still runs the ranch and without him I, I couldn't hardly go, I guess I'd say, but he's been the, my whole deal all the time. He's and then I got some people here at the barn that's worked for me for 26, seven years, you know, three or four grooms. And right now I only got four grooms and three of them have been with me over 25 years. And their names are? Rafael, Jeremo, and Jose. And Mikey's been with me about 15 years, I think. They've been around you for decades, but Blaine, in recent years you've really needed them, what with your back surgeries? 
Well, I've had some bad health the last couple of years, and boy, without them, I don't know how I did it. You know, I, they they kept me going. You know, the Big Rafael and them them guys are really loyal. They've been with me a long time, and they're sure loyal. And I've tried to be loyal to them, but you know, it may come a day when I have to quit, and, and that won't be good for them because they're getting older too. You know, but they're sure good hands. Is racing still? Fun, you think? I mean, it seems to me years ago people got in it for the fun of it, and you could make some money. Is it more business nowadays? It's not fun at all, like it used to be. Yeah, they used to. Every, when I first came here, every every lady that cooked in one of these restaurants around here owned a horse, and they, and they all came out every night, and everybody, you know, you'd go in the restaurant and the cook would holler at you, you know, and uh, it's not that way no more. It's, they're just, they don't own the horses because it costs too much to keep them and you can't run them. You want them once a month, it's, you can't make no money with them. Yeah, the service station people, they always owned a horse. Every, everybody around here owned a horse. Aside from, from training, for years you've also operated your farm and you've been involved in the sale of horses. Actually hosting a sale. Yeah. Well, I love the auctions. I love the sales. I love to put a sale on. I love to have a sale. But uh, we've, I've had to sail ever since I was a kid. I started doing that, and I, I like the sails and stuff. But the ranch, we, we, we've had stallions, you know. I've had some really good stallions at the ranch and stuff. And just last year, I, I cut that out because I don't have a really good one. You know, I still own a third to check him out, and he's at, at uh, Burns's. But, uh, I, I don't have a really good stallion, and you can't make any money standing one of them for two thousand dollars these days. It's just too tough. It costs too much money to run them farms, and the help is really hard to get for that breeding side. Enough about Blaine's stars of yesteryear. How about a star who's in Blaine's care right now? We'll look to that star and meet some of Blaine's best buddies next. Blaine, I had to do some research for this interview. Uh, I guess you might say a little background check. So with the help of some videotape, here's what some of your pals had to say. Well, uh, I was a city boy in Preston. I was about 14 when I went to the auction, and Blaine was a yard man. And if I would clean the ring and all the do the work there, he'd give me an orange pop and let me ride the calves out and back. So that's how I first met Blaine. Now, he's been uh, a mentor to me, and even though he wasn't in the racetrack business, when I was running Boise, if I had problems, I'd call him and get some good advice from him. I might be a little prejudiced on this, but I think he has a really good eye for a horse. Uh, as far as a good one, he has a good eye for one when one is in distress of any kind, even the slightest, that people don't even notice. And he is such a good-hearted guy that it doesn't matter if he knows you or doesn't know, if you need some assistance, he's more than willing to do it. Uh, even if he didn't know who he was, if he had a stable, at La Salle or in Pocatello, Idaho. If you needed some help, uh, Blaine was there. Blaine's one of the best friends I've ever had in my life. He's done a lot to help me, my horses and that. I come down and visit him and his family, and uh, uh, they make me feel like family in that. He's, he's just a great individual. You know, living in Texas, I didn't start coming to Los Alamitas until I got out of the Navy in the early 70s and, and started coming out here three or four times a year. I knew absolutely no one, and, and Blaine just kind of took me under his shoulder and started showing me around and introducing me to people from the from the vessels to the guys in the racing office to everybody on the racetrack and in the 35 years since then I've watched him do that to a hundred 200 other people you know somebody new would come out here and all of a sudden they'd be friends with Blaine. Blaine Schwanevel dominated the AQHA Champion Trainer Award for the first 12 years. Paul Jones has held the title the last eight, but Paul remains a respectful peer. He's always been a really, you know, fierce competitor. He's a, he's a good horseman, and um, in my opinion, he's one of the most dedicated, hardworking trainers that uh, I've ever seen. I, I don't think they make them like him anymore. Despite for years having held the American Quarter Horse Racing record for lifetime earnings of over $50 million, Blaine had never won a million dollar race. Well, in November of 2008, that changed when the Schwanevelt train Trace Passes trounced the competition to win the Golden State Million. And away they go in the, in the Golden State Million and first broke slow. 
Just another affair down along the inside, inseparable to the extreme outside. Here's Trace Passes, who's now coming on strongly. Foose is going to have to pick it up and take a look at Trace Passes and Eddie Garcia. They're in a one-horse race and a huge run. Trace Passes, Eddie Garcia, Flint Schwanabell, take the Golden State Million. And then, one month later, in the Los Alamitos $2 million futurity, Blaine capped off a remarkable year and an incredible career. <laughs> And away they go in the Los Alamitos, two million futurity and a good start for Trace Passes. Foose to the extreme outside also came out well. Fantastic Corona Jr. Double out is coming on, but it's Trace Passes and Eddie Garcia. Foose is coming on. Gamely for Alex Batista on the far outside, but Trace Passes. Here's Foose and Fantastic Corona Jr. But it's the legend to win the Los Alamitos, two million. Blaine Schwanabel, Eddie Garcia. Trace Passes wins the Los Alamitos, two million. Blaine Schwanabel, Eddie Garcia, the winningest connection of all time. Blaine Schwanevelt, the winningest trainer of all time. And Lord knows how many races he's actually won. He's got at least 1,000, if not 1,500 races unrecorded before the stats were kept by the American Quarter Horse Association. 12-time champion trainer, as we said. He won his first million-dollar race this year with the Golden State Million, a race he had won five times before. And there is a look at him, the greatest wow. that ever has been, still on the mountaintop here with trespasses. Tremendous ovation from the crowd here for Blaine, trespasses, and Eddie. These are names that people have been coming here and watching for decades at Los Al, and they, they deliver the goods here in the Million. Don't tell me this guy hasn't been in the game for a while. A 12-time AQHA trainer. He knows when to pick his spots. Why win the Los Alamitos uh, million futurity when it's just a million? It's a two million, and that's where Blaine swoops on in to get the candy. Yeah, we had to get to this one. We'll never get a chance probably run another two million, maybe, you know. <laughs> You're surrounded by all of your family and your friends, but where the heck is Janet McHenry, the owner and breeder of this horse? Well, she said she's superstitious. She gets real excited. She can't, she can't come watch him run. I don't care if she doesn't come, just keep sending me them horses, huh? Equine artist Ginny Harding got it so right when she created her piece on Blaine surrounded by his champions and named it A Man, An Era, A Legend. And this legend came from legacy, a loving mother and family, and love for horses and horsemen from his father. All of my family's that way, and he's, he bred it into us and showed us how to do it when we were young, and we did it that one all the way through our life. We, he was taught to do that way, that way and be honest in trading and buying and selling, and, which we all did, you know, and, and it's like bears down to the horse business and you got a lot of owners and stuff. He was taught to treat them right. Blaine, you've been in the game for so many years. How many more years do you think we can have you around in the game? Well, I'm hoping now. I, I think I got 10 more years after trespasses come along here. <laughs> I'm counting on 10 years at least with him. Blaine, when, when you're gone, how do you want people to remember Blaine Schwanevelt? Well, I'd like him to remember me as a good person, good horseman and a good friend. And most of all, my good family, my, all my family and family people, all my family and stuff. The expression goes, cometh the hour, cometh the man. I hope you've seen in this story, it's a case of cometh Blaine, cometh the era. Blaine Schwanevelt, a quarter horse racing legend and a TVG legend. Mm -hmm.